Welcome everyone to the seminar series from Shift to Rail to Europe's Rail and the seminar two out of three. Last week we listened to uh, Shift to Rail learnings and we listened to Andrea Mazzone telling us about uh, the longer trains and the freight propulsion concepts. We listened to Magnus Wahlborg telling us about the possibilities with yard and network management. And we listened to Arne Henning telling us about the aerodynamics for freight trains. And today we will get an outlook of Europe's rail. My name is Anna Björkman and uh, I'm working at Lindholm and Science Park. And this is my colleague Snea Gosavi. Hello. And I will introduce her uh, later on a little bit more. Uh, we encourage you, uh, as usual, to uh, write your questions in the Q&A continuously and we will try to uh, answer a few of them between the uh, presentations. But there will be uh, a longer Q&A uh, session at the end. And, and uh, this is the agenda for today. We will start with uh, an overview of uh, Europe's rail and uh, the flagship 5 focusing on freight by Snea here. And then Constance Banholzer from Urbe B will tell us a little bit more about uh, the work that will be done uh, regarding the full digital train. And then Jan Bergstrand from Trafikverket will tell us a bit more about the work uh, in seamless operations. And then Björn Bryne uh, will tell us a bit about the, the Norwegian engagement in Europe's rail. And then at the end, me and Anders will discuss uh, the vision forward and how you can participate. Um, but now I will hand over to Snea and she will tell you a little bit about Europe's Rail. So, hello everyone. What is Europe's Rail? So it is the new European partnership on rail research and innovation established under the Horizon Europe program and it is the universal accessor of the shift to rail program which we have been working on. Uh, Europe, Europe's rail works towards the, uh, the twin that is the green and the digital transition of Europe. So this is the team of, uh, team of Europe's rail. The executive director is Carlo Borghini. Um, the head of research and innovation is Giorgio Traviani and Vincent de Clerfid is the head and admin of finance. So the Europe's rail is uh, divided into um, various innovation pillars or we also call them as flagship areas. So there are seven flagship areas. Um, from this seven, uh, the fifth one is uh, uh, focuses more on freight and this is the increase of competitive competitiveness of rail freight and real seamless freight operations. And uh, so we will be, f uh, I will be talking more about this FA5, that is the flagship area 5. So what is, ob what is the objective of Europe's Rail? So to, del to deliver a high capacity, flexible, multimodal, sustainable and a reliable integrated European rail network. Uh, so by, uh, by eliminating all the barriers to interoperability and providing solutions for the European citizens and ra rail cargo. So, and the uh, objective of FA5 is to make rail freight more attractive through increased capacity. Uh, for example, we have uh, digital automatic couplers to increase network capacity uh, as, well, uh, as well as significantly improve and uh, uh, improve the cross-border operations and the multimodal customer services. So, um, the, the, the increased capacity is a key factor to enable a shift uh, of transport volumes to the rail, reducing the greenhouse gas emissions, which, uh, which indirectly contributes to the uh, European Green Deal that, is, uh, that we have planned to achieve. And uh, the FA5 uh, tackles these challenges by, uh, by having two clusters. These two clusters are full digital freight train operations and seamless rail freight operations. So uh, my colleagues will uh, further describe this uh, in the presentation. Then we have the uh, then we have the current actors involved. There is a broad collaboration with different sectors. For example, various uh, railway companies and infrastructure holders. We have uh, different manufacturers and the research institutes. 
Yeah. So thank you. Okay. And uh, thank you, Snia. So I have a just a short question for you. Um, I was thinking, what is the time plan and budget of Europe's Rail? Okay. The time plan is uh, the uh, the project is. Uh, planned to start in 2022, which is this year, and it is aimed to finish around 2027 to 2028. And the approximate budget is around one one billion, more than one billion euros. So it is a huge project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now we will uh, listen to Constance Banholzer from ÖBB, who will tell us a little bit more about the work within the full digital freight train and what. Are the possibilities there? Go ahead. And the floor is yours, Constance. Thank you very much, Anna and Snia. Do you see my screen here in full screen? <coughs> Uh, yes, wonderful. Thank you very much for confirming this. So first of all, I would like to say thank you very much um, and for having me here today at this breakfast seminar and giving me the chance to talk about full digital freight train operations in the context of Europe's rail. Um, my name is Constanze Banholt, so as I was always already introduced and um, I would like to give you a short overview why we are working on this topic and also the context additionally. I think this is very important um, for the sector. And uh, it was already highlighted that I'm working for the Austrian railways. I think what is also important is that I'm involved in additional activities um, concerning the digital automated decoupler being the European duct delivery program. And I think it is always also good to introduce a topic um, with a little bit of a background, so meaning why we actually do what we are doing, just as a brief introduction. And I think it is very important to remind ourselves that we need to re reach very ambitious climate targets, and the sector obviously needs to deal with those increasing volumes. I would say that rail, you can see it in the slide, um, has actually already um, ramped up slightly but we need to significantly ramp up. And the question in rail freight is then also how we are going to do this. And I think the perfect solution is innovation. It is a system transformation and maybe also partly a kind of uh, revolution, if you would like to express it a little bit more uh, strongly. <clears throat> And I think when we're talking about innovation, I would also like to show, uh, in my opinion, also a funny comparison between the telecom sector and the rail freight sector. Maybe if we look at the lower part of the slide, uh, what we see here, and Nia already mentioned, the digital automatic coupling, it's actually the current state of play. And when we look back, um, so the screw coupling has been in use in Europe since 100, more than 180 years. So, and the thing is that the technology as well as the operations haven't really changed significantly. And in contrast to this, I would like to highlight and draw your attention to the upper part of the slide. It's actually the telecom sector. Um, it's comparably old, 160 years roundabout, but Actually, the innovation has completely changed uh, the functionality of a phone. So um, actually, the uh, process when we're going back to rail freight and talking about, for example, just one, one part of the flagship area five is the coupling process. It is complex. It requires manual intervention. A lot of force, long distances need to be walked. And um, this also involves certain risks. Next to this, we're actually also in Europe, almost the last continent um, where the automatic coupling is not yet used. But I think it's really important to say also that this backlog can also be now an opportunity. And um, this then brings me uh, to this topic that the digital automatic coupler, so the DAC is definitely not a 
standalone technology. And this is, uh, please excuse me why I would also like to focus on this because it has really an enabler function and um, it enables full digital freight train operations, which is actually the topic of uh, the work stream or cluster one in the flagship area five. And um, with this enabler function, function, we are able to enable even more functionalities. A train could then be ready uh, for departure in minutes, actually, uh, rather than hours. So with uh, the Europe's rail joint undertaking and in the context of the flagship area five, we have the possibility as a sector to work and develop on a multitude of applications and possibly we could also end up, um, as you can see here on the slide, um, uh, uh, on a smartphone level, let's call it like this, with a numerous number of functionalities. <clears throat> so um, it's not that we are just um, pushing for innovation just to um, reach this in on innovation. I think it's also important to state that we should follow principles being <clears throat> an increase on, on capacity, but also productivity so that we are acting more faster and more efficient, but also improving the service quality next to our customers. And um, this then will bring us on track to reach climate targets with new technologies. In my introduction, I mentioned that I would also like to build up uh, the context. And here today, I'm also wearing the UBB hat, I would say. So we are involved in a sector platform for cooperation in order to push the implementation and the successful rollout of the digital automatic coupling. And this is actually strongly connected to the Europe's rail joint undertaking. So we as UBB are pushing in both initiatives. And um, what is here now key is that the flagship project or area five offers the perfect framework and possibility to work on the technology development, the testing of this technology, but also resulting in large scale demonstration. <clears throat> So as you can imagine, um, and this will also be the core piece of my next two slides to um, describe it in a more abstract level. There are, for me, in my understanding, there are two pillars. So we really need to work on the technology development and we also need to secondly work on the demonstrations. And those are the two core pieces of the um, Europe's rail flagship area five, full digital freight train operations. Now I would like to draw your attention to the technical de development. Please um, also note that this is not uh, mirroring all technical enablers in the flagship area five, but um, it's very uh, comprehensive understanding on what we actually want to achieve. So, and here you also see highlighted the digital automatic coupler and why is it important because with the continuous supply of data and energy along the train we are having the opportunity to develop in a standardized way uh, the european use of technology so first i would like to point out um, that and draw your attention to the small picture where it is saying automatic uncoupling uncoupling. So this is actually a functionality, a use case. And now we should ask ourselves, what do we actually need to work on in order to achieve this? And this is actually the technology, so the technology, the technical enablers that we will be, um, and the sector will be working in the flagship area five, being the digital automatic coupler type four, um, the automatic coupling, but also including the possibility to an um, upgrade to type five, meaning the type five has also included an actuator so that the uncoupling would also be possible in an automatic way. Obviously, um, the work is not done with the uh, connection just between the wagons. We also will develop solutions for the connections 
between the wagons and the locomotives. So this is called as the hybrid coupler for locomotives. Since it was raised at the beginning that here we are talking about the digital part of the coupling, we also need to invest a lot of time and effort in a supply and data communication solution. And additionally, we will also need to work on solutions for wagons where the UIC installation space is not given to allow and enable the retrofitting of all wagons of the European fleet. <clears throat> Those technical enablers that I've been um, describing for the past one or two minutes, they are um, can be assigned to the process step of the shunting. So what you will recognize is that in the flagship area five, full digital freight train operations, we are covering a broad range of the whole trip of a train, starting with the shunting, followed by the train preparations, improvement for the train run, but also for the maintenance. So then the second step before a train then would be actually ready for departure is the train preparation. And there are also several time consuming steps that need to be uh, performed. One of them is, for example, the uh, wagon list. This actually could be automated with the train composition detection. But also, if you think about uh, the train preparation is the uh, braking test. So this then needs round about currently 15 to 45 minutes. So what we will also be working on as a sector in the flagship area five is the automatic brake test system. Additionally, when we're talking about the uh, automated wagon inspection, currently people need to walk along and need to do the visual in ex inspection, um, which is also quite time consuming. So we will also work on solutions developing this and also on the automated parking brake, which is a precondition for the digital automatic coupler type five or sub, uh, um, a complementary. When we are coming now to the train run, run so let's imagine the, the, the train is then now ready for departure. We're talking about the run. And um, since in my introduction, I also mentioned that rail freight is faced with several challenges in terms of capacity with the digital automatic coupler, the um, train integrity solution could be implemented so that at each and every time we would know where the train and the end of the train is actually currently. And this would then allow also the um, um, long awaited uh, moving block operations. So this then would mean that we could operate on the network more densely. Additionally, we will also work on solutions for um, electrochromatic braking system or distributed uh, power concept solution. And I think um, Sria mentioned it in the introduction that um, um, information on longer trains where actually the distributed power concepts and solutions is also bringing added value to will be worked on. Since I've been talking about the shunting, we will also um, need to work in the flagship area five on yard automation. This would then cover solutions for the automatic shunting movements, but also being capable of um, identifying where wagons are currently are. This would then be supplemented by visual uh, recognition methodologies and other solutions such as um, for assets, for example, here we also need to improve on low weight, low energy or low noise solutions. This is actually um, to summarizing that in the FTFTO, so the full digital freight train operations, we are covering a broad range of technology that we will be working on and need to uh, bring to the most possible highest level. Um, in the uh, first phase, which was mentioned until 2025, there is a prioritization. So we will not be able to deliver for the sector all technical enablers ready for market use 
in a first range, but um, some of them we will need to push and drive for the possible highest TRL technology readiness level being TRL 8 or 9. And this needs to be achieved until 2025. As you are probably aware about, the work is not, yet, not just done with the technology development in general. We also need to demonstrate this. And the demonstration um, is also a core piece of this flagship area five in the work stream of the full digital freight train operations. So what the partners that Sria already gave us a preview on who have been involved um, is the ambition that European large scale demonstrators need to run in the first step until latest 2025 and 2026. And here we are having a clear focus on showing the full functionality of the system, but also the safe system integration so that all those components are working in a safe way together. Additionally, also interoperability. The easiest example I can give you is, this is actually no option that we would develop um, technology that is not compatible with each other. So for example, the couplers developed by various um, companies need to be uh, functioning in an interoperable way and also um, for harmonized operation. Why it is actually so important that the joint undertaking put so much focus on the demonstration? Because we need to come to a level where we are developing market ready solutions that could be possibly also deployed. So, one example is, for example, uh, sorry, one example is the digital automatic coupling, where the sector has the ambition to um, start a deployment from 2026 and um, finalize it latest in 2030. It is also important then that when we are working on technology development, that we are doing this hand in hand straight from the beginning, also for the purpose of standardization. And with the demonstration and running trains with the implemented technology, we can also as a sector build up robustness because what we are developing, and this is, shall also be the ambition, should also be reflected in the legal framework, for example, in the various um, TSI revisions. Straight from the beginning, additionally, we also keep, need to keep an eye on that we are developing technology that can also be authorized. Otherwise, we will not be able and capable of deploying those solutions. And with the demonstration and the involvement of a lot of players and stakeholders, we can also gain acceptance. In the first row, the most pressing issue, for example, here is the digital automatic coupler. And here with the flagship area five full digital freight train operation, we should reach a level in terms of technology development and demonstration, which allows us as a sector to be ready for deployment by 2026 and finalize this until 2030. Additional functionalities and um, solutions can then also be implemented, harmonized with the digital automatic coupler in the upcoming years. And um, I think that the joint undertaking gives us here a perfect context, context and framework to work on those issues, reach our targets and goals, and actually in the end, I contribute to the ambitious climate targets. I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And I hope I was able to give you um, a better understanding on the technology on the one hand um, that shall be worked on in flagship area five full digital freight train operation, as well as the um, demonstrators that need to run. Thank you very much. Thank you, Constance. I think uh, it was well understood and very good presentation. Um,
And I have a question for you, and um, it's about uh, ÖBB and your involvement. Uh, so ÖBB is greatly involved and is uh, the biggest contributor in FA5, I think. And how come? I, I would like to say that, um, and actually I would say ÖBB is not alone. A lot of players from the railway sector have realized that um, the rail freight sector needs to improve in order to, um, um, in a smart way, contribute to a capacity increase, get more productive, and also improve our quality for our customers. And um, when we're taking a look on the market and which solutions could possibly allow us to reach this, we have realized um, that we can achieve our targets just collectively because rail freight is internationally. And besides the European duck delivery program where we can work together with uh, various uh, stakeholders, being it IMs or IUs, the Europe's rail joint undertaking um, offers actually this opportunity to us. And um, even though we might be um, a very um, high contributor to this topic, actually, uh, we can just achieve our targets with the overall broad scale of stakeholders. And um, we would really like to follow this in the context with the supplying industry, with the railway undertakings, and also research institutes. So um, we see this as a possibility to reach our targets. Perfect. Thank you very much, Constance. And uh, now I will uh, instead uh, move forward and we will talk about seamless operations. And I will introduce uh, Jan Bergstrand from Trafikverket, who will tell us a little bit more about that work. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Thank you everyone for being here this morning. Good morning to you all. Yeah, as uh, said uh, by Sine uh, in the beginning, there is two legs uh, in uh, FA5 set up where uh, seamless operations play one important role together with a full digital train that was presented by Constanze here. So uh, I will try to take uh, uh, some information about uh, the seamless operation part which is very important as well and is very well connected to the full digital train operations of course the FTFTO part uh, just to, to have a glance over the strength that this program has overall but also for FA5 the freight side is that uh, uh, we have an increased budget. Uh, we were also active in shift to rail. There is a transition, as you know now, and uh, EU Rail has started uh, its organization now set up. Uh, the increase of freight is uh, not only by partners, but also by budget uh, at least 50% higher than in shift to rail. And uh, those muscles with think and those good partners we think can take this to next level. Um, Traffic Verket as a Swedish uh, infrastructure manager for actually both uh, road and rail. Uh, we have a, a good experience from shift to rail so we are very keen on continue uh, trial to, to get approved here in the upcoming, uh, in the call that is, is published now. And uh, our uh, efforts is uh, also higher uh, than last time. Uh, at least as high, uh, uh, it, it's about 60% higher. So uh, we, we have really uh, uh, putting efforts into to freight as such. Uh, as mentioned, there is an uh, overall plan published uh, and there is a structure of two um, areas in FA5. 
already mentioned, as I said, but it's worth uh, repeating. It's the full uh, digital train in operations and uh, seamless operation. And I will cover the uh, logistic part here, the supply chain part, you might say. Many shippers are very uh, eager to see improvements in rail uh, when it comes to su uh, supply chain management uh, efforts and skills. Uh, rail must play its role in the logistical chains with a multimodal perspective in our head and the minds. It's of course important to have the information flow connected. And it's also important to have connection to the railway in an easier way. So we are working uh, hard in the future with this. And of course the full digital train operations is a support in, in some enabler technologies also to, towards seamless operation. So it belongs together, uh, the package. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, freight transport is never uh, or very seldom regional. It goes over borders, regional borders, national borders, etc. And for that we have uh, uh, many years established uh, railway corridors as well as a support in the production uh, and in the customer offer. And uh, those corridors uh, we will reach out more to integrate solutions together with them. And for instance uh, ScanMed corridor and uh, EU Rail has been in contact recently to, to see what we can do in, uh, with the demonstrations and so forth in the, in the corridors. And uh, of course they are orchestrating other corridors as well. So there is an interest not only in ScanMed but also the other corridors for, for, for being an, uh, an arena. And of course when it comes to seamless operations, information flows, this is uh, obvious that this is a good place to put things together. We will have uh, enabling, techno enabling technologies inside of Seamless as well. Uh, we, I will show them later, but it of course goes more towards planning, towards customer uh, and uh, uh, solutions that technologies that capture data and uh, is an enabler for sharing data in a better way. We uh, will combine the enablers uh, together to make this chain, uh, the logistical chain, supply chain management uh, smooth. I will show some simple uh, example later on how it can work with uh, the enablers brought together in a package. Yeah, the technical enablers is, is of course, it, it's obvious that it's seamless, that is the key word. And uh, that means of course that in a multimodal chain there should be no uh, delays according to information sharing. It should be a smooth transport in a corridor or wherever. And uh, uh, how to tackle that is of course that there is nodes in the production system. It can be terminals where the transport starts and ends and it can also in between be in some cases uh, shunting, marshalling. And all those moments of uh, let's say consolidation has to be aligned and uh, smooth and time not so time consuming and manual as today. The DAC mentioned before is one enabler bring in more automation to the market, to the production. But there is also other obstacles if the information flow is not correctly performed. We have a strong uh, feeling about intermodal or multimodal. Uh, rail uh, can do a lot itself, but not all, that's for sure. So multimodal, intermodal, transport is important and the uh, integration and the prediction. It's so easy, so I mean estimated time of arrival, estimated time of departure should be clear and uh, presented to the client. And if there is some deviations of course alert notification 
is, is one obvious thing, uh, a minimum to uh, offer the market. And this the piece I told you about supply chain management thinking, customer orientation. Uh, we have checkpoints. There is, as I said, nodes, cross-border nodes as well as productional and terminal nodes. And there is a need for capturing data, checking that the train composition is the same as in the booking, checking uh, uh, status of the wagons and locals. And uh, we have there for established already in shift to rail uh, something we call intelligent video gate, also supported by sensors like RFID. And those things is possible to place in a strategical way so that you can capture data and check the booking towards the performance in real time. So uh, this is uh, one uh, thing that we are going to continue with and also take to further levels uh, of implementation because a couple of them is not doing any uh, huge job for the services. It has to be a network. And there is also functionalities that uh, we can see that could be further developed. We have also the cross-border issues with uh, a uh, local driver. If you go by truck, you can go from one country to another without uh, much problem. Even if you have a language barrier, that's not a problem when it comes to, co at least when it comes to perform the, 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 the business itself. So, uh, but in, in rail, there is uh, another story where you have to overbridge these uh, issues so that one local driver language-wise, but also security-wise and other stuff can go from one country to another without changing uh, drivers all the time or locals. So we look into that. Also perform, uh, of course, a seamless uh, enabler. Multimodal integration, it's about accessibility to the clients, uh, for the clients, the shippers to, to railway. There should be easier booking platforms uh, to reach. Uh, where can I uh, hit the best train option for a certain relation? Uh, what's the pricing? What's, uh, uh, what, what, how, can I, how can I get in touch with the railway in an easy way? And there is also, of course, services around this in the performance itself that as a backup. So integration is also here the key, but also accessibility and easiness uh, with bookings, etc. Uh, it, it's obvious that if you deal with data, there is always uh, a need for a certain amount of data to do something good and uh, also use it in the right way and uh, uh, distribute it to, in the right way. So seamless data availability and exchange is a, uh, is a field that we have to further work with, uh, both legally aspects as well as platform aspects, how to share data between actors. And that's of course very important in a multimodal chain. And there we can see also a lot of uh, uh, fields that is connected. So there will be a lot of synergies in the work in this particular enabler. How easy can it be then? Yeah, in, in a picture it seems quite obvious and quite basic, but uh, to, to get, get these things together and working together is, seems to be a little bit harder. But this is definitely something we want to do in seamless operation. We want to have one customer showcase, the, talking about the easiness, the accessibility. You can see that in the left corner, customer data sharing, accessibility, booking, etc. platforms. You have also connection with the uh, locals in the upper hand left corner. And then the system itself in a corridor from a terminal or a yard throughout this corridor to the other back end 
where you have the same structure and in between you can then have technical solutions like intelligent video gate sensors, detectors, etc. both on the uh, infrastructure as well as on the wagons and equipment locus. And then of course you have the uh, network management systems uh, that provides capacity in the line, which is very much the business of corridors, etc. Infrastructure managers for that sake too. And this should be brought together in a package as a seamless freight showcase in a corridor. So this uh, uh, picture with uh, smiling people, hearts, etc. is, uh, is uh, the way we will do it. And here is the example of ScanMed, but there is, of, as I said, a lot of other corridors involved as well in countries. And this, uh, this uh, thinking is uh, very much in our mind to contribute uh, uh, with a, a better setup in a, 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 with railway as an important part in the supply chain. I think I stopped there uh, and uh, hope that this message has gone through. Uh, we will work hard with this uh, field as well. A uh, lot of companies have put interest here, so uh, we, we foresee a good cooperation also in this field as well as in FTFTO, as Constance mentioned. Yeah, we really hope so, and uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, I just have uh, one question um, for now, uh, <laughs> and it's about the intelligent video gate. Um, yeah. Why is this uh, intelligent video gate important in the seamless operations? Yeah, it, it's, uh, it was a little bit shown, I think, in uh, the last seminar as well, but it has a, a functionality uh, that is very interesting for check, checking things, um, capturing data. It it's consists of, of a video and a, of sensors RFID, so it can uh, capture uh, unit numbers, it can capture wagon numbers and with this data sharing platform uh, in the other neighbor it can also be distributed to various operational terminals that can do a better planning. But there is also other functions in this uh, uh, video gate that goes towards more recognition of uh, placards, uh, dangerous cargo placards, etc., etc. But it can also detect other things like uh, damages, like components. So it can also contribute in in other parts than just the logistical part. So it's uh, also one um, innovation that we see uh, coming up in the yard uh, field, where is uh, uh, that Constance was mentioning. So uh, it's, it has twofold of uh, possibilities. But the logistical one is, is in the corridor and it's uh, connected to the terminal or ports. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, with that I will uh, continue in the program and introduce uh, Björn Bryne uh, from the Norwegian Rail Directorate who will tell us a little bit about the Norwegian uh, engagement in Europe's rail. Let's see if I manage this. And well, now let's see if the is that correct? No, I think the opposite screen. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, I'll try to give... Uh, I don't have these nice pictures as everybody else has, so uh, bear with me. Um, uh, uh, Norwegian Railway Directorate is wasn't participating in shift to rail. So we experienced a lot of new things here. 
uh, and our involvement in, uh, in flagship era five is uh, uh, to a large degree decided upon the uh, nature of the rail freight in Norway. We, we, we do not do wagon loading. Uh, and uh, a fair reason for that is that almost all industries in Norway that produce anything that weighs more than 500 tons or something like that has their own um, dock. So they transport things by ship if uh, time constraints allow for it. That means also that mo much of our freight is um, things that uh, are in a big hurry. And we use uh, intermodal uh, more than the rest of Europe at least. Thus, we do not uh, shunt as much or decouple as much as the other countries. Uh, the Norway, the railway directive is a fairly new organization. It's five years, a little more, after a reform of the Norwegian uh, rail sector, or at least the public part of it. Uh, our role is to coordinate the railway sector. And we also, um, uh, uh, through contracts with the infrastructure manager and the passenger train operators, um, uh, um, controls the, the public money into the sector. Uh, for freight, which is uh, operating on uh, commercial terms, uh, we have less uh, direct involvement. involvement. Uh, for Europe's rail, we has taken this coordination role uh, uh, as our tool to deliver the necessary uh, products or uh, services, both to Europe's rail as such and as to the Norwegian railway uh, uh, inspection. So we have connected uh, a lot of um, actors or uh, companies or uh, into the um, into the sector. Sorry, this part, this figure is in Norwegian. Uh, the upper part is the public um, companies. Uh, you have the Department of Transportation and Communication, which uh, owns much most of the. the um, the public parts, uh, and you have um, the infrastructure manager in Norskatog, you have um, companies responsible for ticketing for passenger trains, for um, maintenance, and for owning the passenger trains. Uh, then you have the train, mm, uh, the, the train operators, uh, both for passenger trains and for freight. For freight, we have connected to at least some of the um, op operators in Norway. And then we have uh, several uh, research institutes and, and universities that will participate in Eurotrail uh, together with us. Uh, how much and who will be decided in the coming months up until the, the call is uh, delivered. Uh, as for um, our objectives in, in FA5, uh, you have seen Constanza and, and Jan list uh, the entirety of the, um, the objectives for FA5. And, and we, a little due to the reasons I talked about earlier, is uh, as, uh, doesn't cover the entire field. One, one issue that uh, is uh, special and doesn't have that much to do with, with the, the speciality of, of Norway, but more the good um, cooperation between Norway and Sweden is the, uh, Jan mentioned the um, multi-country uh, tr train driver um, license, which isn't interesting for Norway actually because we have already achieved that. 
because it's only interesting to drive from Norway to Sweden. Sweden is so big that it's very unlikely that a Norwegian driver will drive any further than to Sweden because that will be more than one workday, either to Ödersunds Bridge or to Haparanda. Both of that is more than one workday. So the multimodal, multimodal little licensed driver isn't very interesting for us, other than in a transport chain that uh, stretches over the border through to, through to Denmark or to, to Finland or Germany with a ferry or something. So uh, our main objectives uh, is that we need to participate so that we are ensure that the DAC with all its, or the FDFDO actually, with all its advances uh, will work in the fairly challenging Norwegian uh, climate. Uh, we have uh, in the works seen that Norwegian winter and Swedish winter is similar, but not the same. Uh, we think that the self-propelled wagon would be important for Norway, at least some places. Uh, it will uh, increase uh, production in some terminal and actually make, probably make it possible to establish uh, intermodal terminals at, in fairly small nodes with fairly small volumes uh, because we can avoid, uh, avoid a lot of, um, of equipment there. And then for the most part, we think that seamless is very important to um, make the intermodal transport chains more efficient, faster, more uh, transparent for the customers. And for us, um, it is important that the seamlessness stretches beyond the railway to the companies that transport the containers and trailers from the intermodal terminals to the end customers. Uh, Possibly for some of the fairly, at least in money wise, uh, important uh, things where we also have ships involved. Uh, I think uh, so. And, and we will try to, uh, as Jan mentioned, include uh, applications uh, onto the ScanMed corridors. Uh, for uh, most of this seamless work. Um, and as I said, uh, we would like to, um, or I didn't say it, but I implied it, fresh foods and uh, fish uh, is, uh, will be important to us to introduce the, uh, the specifics for that kind of uh, commodities into the, the, the solutions. I think I'll end there. Perfect, um, Bjorn. Thank you very much. Um, before we move on, I had one question and it was if you could elaborate a little bit about the reasons behind why you only have intermodal traffic and no uh, single wagon. I, th I tried to say it. Um, we have very little, little heavy industries in the inland. Almost all of our uh, manufacturing industry that manufacture things is on the, has their own uh, dock. And uh, it must also be said that, uh, I don't know the figure, but I think it's around 80% of the Norwegian uh, population lives less than 10 kilometers from the sea. And uh, for the economical production or national product or something, it's something like that too. And, uh, uh, and, and a big part of the Norwegian economy comes from, is produced on the sea or for the sea. 
either fishing, oil industry, fish shipping, whatever. So we don't have an industry or we have very little industry that uh, is suited for uh, wagon loading. Okay. Thank you very much, Björn, and uh, thank you for a good presentation. And uh, you can switch off your camera for now, and uh, then there will be maybe some more questions in the Q&A. And, and then, uh, Anders, yeah. uh, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about uh, the vision forward and how uh, one could uh, participate in Europe's rail. Yes, some few, few words. and. Uh, uh, I wanted to show these uh, pictures from the European Duck uh, Delivery Program and uh, uh, talking about uh, things uh, Constanze ha has already mentioned that uh, we, we are working for uh, the DAC, the Digital Automatic Coupler and uh, its uh, enablers. And uh, uh, this is uh, the, the planning for now that uh, in uh, 2025 uh, the, the, uh, there will be demonstrations about this and uh, the enablers and in 2026 we are ready to start the, the mi migration and we will talk about the migration in the uh, next uh, breakfast seminar I think yeah so uh, and uh, as I see this is uh, something very it's a giant step as I see because if if the rail sector doesn't do this, uh, it, it, uh, it will be very tough uh, living in the future because uh, the, the other transport modes are not standing still, uh, just uh, waiting for, for, for this. They are also uh, uh, working to be more efficient. And uh, so, so this is, uh, uh, and you have to, to turn the rail freight into an intelligent freight and uh, that's uh, what, what this is all about and that's uh, what I see as the vision. And how to participate, it's, um, it's, uh, we will at Lindholm at least try to inform everybody uh, as well as we can and if you are interested in, in um, knowing what's, uh, what's happening and so, so please uh, send us an, um, a mail or something and we will put you on a secret list so we will try to inform you about uh, what's happening and, uh, <coughs> and all this, um, these calls that, uh, that are, we are working with are also uh, it's, uh, open calls and we seek uh, uh, collaboration and uh, Trafik Werker, for instance, is, uh, who is a big uh, player in this. Uh, they they uh, uh, are, are looking also for uh, cooperation with, uh, with other companies in Sweden and things like that. So if you are interested, you can, um, you can be in touch and we will uh, try to facil facilitate uh, further, further cooperation. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Anders. So uh, that's it for today. So all in all, we are looking forward to start working in uh, Europe's rail. And uh, next week, as Anders said, we will look into the technology of the digital automatic coupler a bit more. What are the possibilities and uh, yeah, what work has been done? And so on. And we will listen to uh, Jens Engelman from Railable, who will uh, talk about the European DAC delivery program and uh, Fabian Bartzek from Deutsche Bahn who will tell us a bit about the tests that have been uh, performed and uh, Johan Åhman from Delner who will describe the Swedish uh, winter tests and Björn and Anders will also discuss the possibilities of uh, introducing the digital automatic coupler in uh, Scandinavia. So I want to thank the audience for listening, but, and uh, now there will be a Q&A session for uh, the last 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Okay, then uh, I will uh, let Jan come back here, and we shall see if we had some uh, questions coming up. And, uh, uh, Björn, you can also uh, switch your camera back on. 
so let's see. And um, Constanze couldn't be here for the Q and A, I think. But we had some uh, questions for uh, uh, Björn and Jan. And uh, let's see here. So uh, there was one question, Jan, for you. You can take the mic there. Uh, and it's about if you could elaborate a little bit more about why isn't the traffic seamless already today? It works smoothly with the trucks already. Yes, uh, <coughs> thank you for the question. And uh, yeah, it, it can, uh, when you saw the picture uh, 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 with a seamless corridor, it, it, it's, it seems not so complicated in a way, but there is, there is uh, various actors along the chain and uh, the production side of, of railway could of course be block trains but it could also be in the wagon load system and then you pass various terminals and you pass borders it's uh, various kinds of operators along the road national or private railway undertakings and uh, even if they have had projects like X-Rail, etc., working towards the planning uh, in a seamless way, the success of, of making it fully seamless is, has not been there. It's too many uh, uh, stakeholders that, that is not connected, and and therefore it's hard to to share data. And also, of course, even if you can share data with new technologies that's coming up, which we are looking at, data sharing, uh, you say ledger techniques, etc. There are still some uh, issues to sort out. Legal aspects, how to share data, who can have access to certain data, mm. and when and what. And um, that is also something to be solved. But I think that can be a good help and a, a good enabler. To, to bind the flu together. Uh, so that this is, and it's twofold, it's the production itself with the corridors and operators, and it's also towards the customers. So it's also uh, one, one thing that you have to align. So it fails here in this chain. Uh, it should and could be better. And we can see that we can produce something really good here uh, hopefully with a, uh, in quite short notice so we can have some good examples and showcases both from the customized digitization as well as the corridor uh, showcase so um, yeah I think the future uh, in the future we will be a part of the supply chain sounds good and you also mentioned that there's um uh, col collaborations with uh, other projects. Uh, do you have any examples of this? Uh, first and foremost, we, we work, of course, uh, with the FDF2 part in, in FA5, uh, where some sensor technologies, some enabled technologies can bring data to, to the seamless operation. So we can start in, in our own <laughs> uh sort of speak room but then it's also other projects on the eu level at ttlf and, and which is the digital transport Logistics forum where there is two projects where uh, some of the partners in in also in in uh, europe's rail is participating among them traffic where it's federated which works with platforms uh, data sharing and also like say uh, adif in spain for instance is is one uh, beneficiary in that federated project and we work together there and we will certainly do here in 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 Europe's rail as well so there is a uh, initiatives also out in the in the market sort of speak that we will capture and bring along into the FA5 of course yep. thank you and uh, Anders uh, did you have any questions for uh, Björn 
over there. Well, I had, had uh, one. Um, we are discussing a cooperation between uh, Sweden and uh, Norway in this uh, Europe's Rail. And um, uh, I wonder if uh, what other countries do you foresee as uh, partners to Norway? Everybody or nobody or <laughs> <laughs> in, in certain areas we have uh, had discussions with uh, the Dutch. Okay. Uh, we see that we have emerging transports uh, of fish uh, through the um, Netherlands. Uh, and uh, we also know that there are uh, the return transports of uh, either flowers or um, food that uh, is in need of the same kind of transport unit uh, namely, it's something that keeps the environment cold. Uh, so we have had discussions there, and I know with all the flagship areas, uh, there are other partners. Um, uh, so, uh, but it's fairly new to us, so we are working much slower than you are. <laughs> we need to learn first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Did you have uh, another question? Not no? that I can remember now. No, sorry. Yeah. No, I think that was all the questions uh, we had for uh, for now. And uh, so I think we say uh, thank you for participating. Uh, it was uh, nice to discuss with you, and uh, we look forward to work together in uh, Europe's Rail. So um, bye bye, and <laughs> see you next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Is it synth that they're so full? It's a good.